what's going on YouTube welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel it's the pizza guy John and today's video I am going to be talking to you about my Famag mixer I've had this mixer going on about four years now um, and I still use it maybe a couple times a month if that um, but I haven't done a video showing you guys what I've learned by using this mixer over the four years Things that I've either learned by myself just trial and error or just from watching other people who has also had the same mixer I recently had some people reach out to me asking me what I thought about the mixer because they are interested in getting the mixer So I figured you know why not make a video showing you guys the mixer so again some things that I like about it some things that maybe I don't like about it I'm gonna make some dough so stick around to the end and you'll see a pizza being made uh, with the dough that I've made using this mixer comment down like and subscribe again stick around to the end of the video to see a pizza being made with the dough that I made from this mixer so again this mixer is the Famag IM8S mixer the reason why it's S is for high hydration um, again and also because of that there's a couple different models with this you could either get the Famag mixer that does not tilt up so the head does not tilt up and the bowl stays in here or you could get this model this is again the IM8S so eight quarts is basically what that means as well and again the top does come up and the bowl does come off so I'll show you how that comes off and again it has on here closed or open so right now it is closed we'll go ahead and open it by twisting it and again this will come off and then you can go ahead it makes it easy for cleaning um, and again if you're using high hydration you're able to just to basically dump that out onto your working space so uh, again it's pretty simple pretty durable uh, bowl I did drop it once so you'll be able to see kind of here but again it doesn't mess up anything so uh, let's go ahead and let's get this back in and again to close it again all you would be doing is twisting it and it locks it in so again it stays in there as well you can see the big spiral uh, hook here and so again this is the mixer so a couple things on this side you have your speed control here so fast and slow and then your you know reverse this is to kill it if you pull this up it also kills it so it's a safety feature as well with this so one thing that I want to state right off the back is this mixer is heavy it is full metal as you can see it is you know pretty durable machine so I keep it in basically what I consider as the washer dryer pantry area and it stays in there when I'm making dough I don't move it it stays it stays in there because as you can see you need two people to carry this mixer it is pretty heavy you could carry it yourself um, but just don't hurt your back or anything like that so it is a pretty heavy mixer um, so that's one thing is that again if you have someone to help you move it around perfect if not if you have it in just one space where you're able to keep it and make your dough even better all right so another thing that I've learned over the time with using this mixer is that it does tend to heat up the dough pretty quickly um, so one thing that I've learned and something that I've kind of been incorporating into my dough making is I get cold water ice cold water and maybe 30 minutes to an hour before I decide to make my dough I'll weigh out my water place it into the fridge or to the freezer and that way when it's ready to when I'm ready to start making pizza I have some cold water that I'll pour in there I like to go around maybe 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit when I'm making my pizza with the water and over the time of mixing the dough in the with the mixer um, it will heat it up to about the temperature that I want so I'm gonna go ahead and just get the water now that I have here and again it's just some ice cold water and again I've seen people do ice cubes and they'll put it into the water I really don't do ice cubes I'll just go ahead and just use ice cold water so let's take a look and see as far as what this water is looking at we're looking at about 36 35 eh, about 33 degrees Fahrenheit uh, so the water is cold and like I said over time in the mixer um, it will heat it up but you don't want anything um, you know that's going to be warm room temp water uh, maybe depending on where you're at if you're in a cold environment maybe that will be fine too but again you don't want your dough to be heated up because again it just ferments faster um, and again you know you just want to be consistent so using cold water help out so I'm going to go ahead and just make way out our water now down below in the description bar I'll go ahead and put the recipe that I'm doing I'm making about eight pizzas all right so we have our water now weighed out going and put that to the side and like I said this is not a dough recipe video this is just showing you guys things that I've done or things that I've learned um, over the time of using this mixer and hopefully it helps you if you're looking into buying the mixer as well maybe this video will help you make that decision because um, again I've had this 
mixer now for four years and I'll just say right off the back, there has not been any issues with this mixer. Each and every time it works perfectly. Uh, like I said, I do use it maybe about once a month or so. Um, and again, it has not given me any issues. I take really good care of it, clean it well um, and all that. Like I said, all working parts are still thin you know, just as I bought it. So I'm going to just get everything mixed into the bowl and then we'll come back. I poured the yeast into my mixture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get this closed off. Again, all you do is you're using screws here. And again, this just tightens it up to keep it from coming up. Go ahead and close it. And well, like I said, I like to keep it on a low speed. So normally when I'm mixing it, I'm doing about uh, speed two or so. Um, and again, this is the forward button, the one that you want. Go ahead and hit that and we'll let it go. As you can tell, it's at one or two and it is a quiet mixer. So I like, that's one thing that I do like about it. It is very quiet, it's not super loud. Um, so I, I do definitely enjoy that. And so while that is mixing, then we'll go ahead and we'll get our water poured in here. And I kind of just get maybe half of that in as well. And again, I'm keeping it at a low or one low, I mean, low speed, maybe between one and two and just keeping that going. Um, this will mix for maybe about 15 minutes or so. But again, one or two is where I like to keep it at. Um, it's not mixing the dough quick and it's not heating it up. Um, so again, you want to be consistent and keeping at a low speed. Um, I found again, me personally is the best way to go. So I'll continue doing this and we'll come back here shortly. So one thing I do also want to mention is that being that this is an eight quart uh, mixer, um, you can do anything lower than a thousand grams of flour. Um, it does take a little bit longer because again, the hook has to basically catch that um, and bring it all together. So, you know, it is definitely doable if you want to do small batches, but usually again, this mixture is going to be made for big batches. Um, what I have in this mixture is about 1,291, I believe, uh, grams of flour and then again um, the amount of water so this is the perfect amount anything above a thousand grams of flour perfect for this mixture again this can go up to um, I believe 5,000 grams you know between 5,000 6,000 grams um, that's gonna be you know pretty pretty good for this mix or anything more of course it's gonna be coming out um, but usually I kind of stick around anywhere between uh, you know 4,000 5,000 grams of flour in here and again no issues whatsoever so this has been going on for a couple minutes now as you can see it is all coming together the bottom of the bowl is looking clean I still do have some water as well as the salt to add in so I'll go ahead and get that mixed in there and then we'll be back here here shortly. So as you can see, the spiral mixer is definitely pulling everything together. You have a clean bottom of your bowl, so that is nice. Um, again, it's pulling it together. As you can see, it's starting to get what I consider almost like a pumpkin or ice cream. Still not fully smooth, but again, again, like, well, like I said, I like to keep it at one or two. And I do this the whole 15 minutes or so, depending on you know what, I, what the dough's looking like. But I'll continue this speed. Um, and again, it's not heating up the dough super fast, but it's also building that glue in. Um, so that's just what I like to do. So at this point, I just have a little bit of water. I'll just go ahead and show you what I like to do. Um, and I like to pour it slowly all the way around. And just like that, we have all the water in, in the bowl. And what that now is gonna do is I'm gonna let this mix for another couple more minutes. It's gonna pull it all together nice and evenly. And I'll come back and I'll show you once it's fully smooth and what it looks like when it's what I consider like a pumpkin uh, or like, you know, ice cream looking. So uh, we'll come back here in a minute. So about halfway into the mix, what I like to do is I'll go ahead and, and what I'll show you is when you lift it up, it kills it. So again, that's a safety feature that this has built into it. You could also hit this red uh, button here and that will also stop it. But what I'm doing right now is I'm basically checking to see where the dough is at. Uh, we're looking at about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, if we switch it to Celsius. All right, so we got that switch. And if I take a look at it, we're looking at about 17, about 16 degrees Celsius. And if we switch it back to Fahrenheit, we're looking at about 60, 61, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, using cold water, again, helps the dough from not overheating. Um, because again, any sort of mix, mixers that you, any sort of spiral mixers that you have, um, again, it's gonna heat it up. So like I said, using cold water at a slow speed, about one or two, you could even go to three, 
Um, it just helps build that glue in, but it's not overheating, it's just not messing it up, and it's you're getting a consistent dough each and every time um, by doing that. Again, you gotta figure out your room temperatures, where you're mixing at, uh, sort of hydrations that you're using. Again, that is all gonna be up to you. Um, so again, just playing around with it, but again, that's what works for me. I've tended to use that, and each and every time I have a good dough, so. We'll come back here shortly. All right, so at this point, we've now been mixing a little bit over 10 minutes or so. Um, you can see that the dough is coming off the bottom really nicely. It's pulling away. The bowl is looking clean, and you can see it's getting that uh, pumpkin look. Um, it's starting to get there fully. Not quite there yet, but we're getting pretty close to you know what I would almost consider to the point where I would then stop the mixer and then you know cover it up and, and do some other uh, resting periods. I'm gonna let this continue to go, uh, maybe like another minute or so, then we'll come back. I'll go ahead and also place the link to where I got this mixture if you're here in the US. Um, there's a website that, again, I believe so far as of right now, they're only the exclusive uh, dealers for this brand. So if you're in the US, of course, if you're anywhere else, I'm sure you'll be able to find it um, where they can ship to you. Again, it is made in Italy, um, but I'll go ahead and place that link down below. Check it out. Again, if you're interested in that mixer, uh, again, the link will be down below as well. So what, what I really love about this mix, mixer is the way that it builds the glue in and incorporates the air nicely into it. Um, and that was really the main selling point on getting a nice spiral mixer is that it's going to help level up your pizza game. It's going to help maybe your bread game, you know, whatever you're using it for, it's going to help in that. Um, but it just helps build gluten nicely. It helps build that air. Um, it evenly gets that in there. And so that's one thing that really sold me on it. It's just also the way that it's made, per, you know, it, it's built really, really nice. Like I said, I've had this mixture now for four years and I've had no issues with it, uh, knock on wood. Um, so that's really one thing is now what you can really hear is you could hear the air. You could hear the air being pushed in from the spiral mixer into that dough. Um, so that's when you know that towards the end where you're getting to the point where this dough um, is pretty close to finishing because you could hear the air being pushed into there. You can see some bubbles that are also being formed as well. Um, so really at this point, you know, I would consider this to be, you know, a pretty, pretty good dough it, ready to be stopped. Um, as you, again, you can see that it is getting very smooth um, and it's just building nicely around that mixer. Uh, you can see it building around this part right here. And you can see now where the pumpkin is basically forming of it, fully coming off the bottom. It's not sticking. So this dough is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look now at the temperature of this dough and let's see where we're at. So you can see how it's looking like a pumpkin now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and push that in. And we're looking about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we do uh, Celsius, we're looking at about uh, 20 degrees celsius so really anywhere between i would say let's say 67 68 and 74 degrees fahrenheit um, is perfect anything above that your dough is going to be too hot so um, i'll probably do maybe one more minute of mixing this and then i'm going to cover it up let it rest for 15 minutes and then i will then be back all right so i've just done a 15 minute rest period cover it up this just helps the gluten relax and builds a strong dough and let's take a look at this dough if i pull it um, we're getting a nice window. So this dough is pretty strong. This dough is good. Normally if I was kneading by hand, then I'd probably do maybe two or three different rest periods, 15 minute rest periods, just to help build that glue in. The best thing about this mixer is that you don't need to do multiple rest periods. I just do one, let it rest in the bowl, cover it up, let it rest and then I take it out, ball it up, and I put it into my container. So that's basically what we're gonna do at this point. I'm not gonna show you guys how I put the dough together, make the dough balls and all that. I have other videos for you to check out um, on my channel if you wanna take a look at that. But now at this point, I'll ball it up, if one big ball, put it in the fridge 24 hours, then the next 24 hours, I'll ball it up to my individual dough balls, another 24 hours into the fridge, and then at that point, pizza will be ready to be made. So at this point, if you made it this far, like, comment, and subscribe. All right, so we're back. Before I get into showing you guys how I make a pizza, let me just show you guys how easy this is to clean. So of course, if you have the mixture that, that you couldn't take out the bowl, then of course, this is where you would leave it. Or if you have the mixture that you couldn't take off the tilt up the head, 
then this is how it will look. Again, it's super easy to clean. I just have a warm rag here with a little bit of water and soap. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just cleaning and scrubbing all the points where there was uh, dough. Again, this bowl is pretty clean, so it doesn't you know need too much cleaning. But again, you could also lift it up, which is what normally what I would do. Um, and at this point, I'm just going in uh, with this rag, cleaning off the edges, a little bit of some dough that stayed on there. And it's pretty easily clean, like I said, um, being that I've mixed it pretty well. Also at this point, what I could do is I could also release the bowl, take it into my kitchen sink with a little bit of warm water and some soap. Then I could also then clean that off in there as well. And so this is what I would basically do since it does have soap, it's an easy clean. Doesn't require too much. That goes poured in there and I'll let that dry. And still, this still has some soap on there and some water. So now what I'll do is I'll have another rag here, another towel that I like to use and just to catch any of the residual uh, dough. Then of course, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and just scraping off the bar here. As you can tell, it's not so dirty, which is nice. And then we're gonna do the spiral hook as well. And so again, you're just scrubbing it, spinning it around and cleaning it as I go through. And just like that, it is a pretty easy clean and so we just got a little spot here this edge is, gets dirty clean the bottom here and just like that it is nice and clean I'll just dry it off as well with that towel get any, any of the flour off here and now the mixer is nice and clean I'll put the bowl I'll move it back into my spot or if I had it there already then I just cover it with some plastic and then the mixer is now ready to be used the next time so now at this point since you've made it this far you now get to check out a pizza being made with this dough that I had made with this mixer all right so it's 48 hours later the dough has been sitting in the fridge as you can see I got a couple dough balls left I have been making some pizzas with it so let's go ahead and make a pizza with this dough that I've made uh, in my mixer so uh, let's go ahead and do that. This is just going to be a margarita pizza. And so we're going to go ahead and get this dough ball. You can see it made for a nice dough ball. It's airy. It's just the way we like it. And we're going to go ahead and get it stretched out. Building our crust, you can hear that air in there. And that's stretched out here. Dough's feeling good. Get all this Molina off. And get this here and like I said I'm just gonna go down with some of our red sauce here and we got some basil that I've just chopped up just gonna go ahead and sprinkle that around here make sure each bite gets a piece of basil do some olive oil and then here is our cheese. I'm just going to go for a handful here. All right. And we've had our dome preheated with some wood. Uh, so it's ready to go. It's been, like I said, I've been making some pizzas with it. And I'm just going to get this stretched out. All right. And going straight into the dome. Again, we have wood going on. And so if you made it to this point, again, I've made dough using my mixer. Again, I've had this mixer going on about four 
three and a half, eh, about three and a half, four years now. Um, I figured just give you guys just a little review, kind of what I thought of it, how I liked it. Um, and you know, again, you can see the dough that it makes. It just does a really, really good job. So again, if you liked it so far, like, comment, and subscribe. We got some big bubbles here. And so again, the mixer is going to be adding in a lot of air. Um, so definitely does a good job doing that. Um, so we've got some big crust here. But we're gonna make sure we get this cooked all the way. The bottom's looking nice. Finish it off just right here. Again, bottom is looking good. And just like that, the pizza is cooking again, nice and even all the way around. Uh, let's go ahead and just finish off this little piece. And so basically, I'll just go ahead and end the video here as well. Again, if you liked my video, again, comment down below. I'll leave a link to the mixer of where I got it at as well. Again, I'll leave all my tips and tricks that I've learned over the time that I've had it. Um, again, if you're interested or just have some questions, again, shoot me a message down below or check out my Instagram at the Pizza Guy John. I'm all happy to be answer any questions there as well. Uh, but again, this is the pizza that was cooked. Again, this dough was made using the Famag mixer, IM8S. Again, I appreciate you all. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll talk soon.